James, if we have a look at the intraday graph, you can see exactly what's happened. We've seen the flash PMI numbers come out and the market rebounding back. And really, it seems the worse the numbers get out of China, the bigger the hopes grow for more stimulus as well as interest rate cuts. And I think that's exactly what's happened on the market. We saw the PMI flash numbers for August and a reading of 47.8. And while initially the market reaction was negative, I think traders have started to focus on the probability of more stimulus coming out of the U.S. Of course, it did help that in the U.S. overnight, we saw those FOMC minutes coming out and talking of more stimulus if the recovery, uh, if we don't see more signs of recovery. But having said that, uh, that, that statement's now three weeks old. And since then, we have seen... Um, we have seen numbers getting better out of the U.S., so it's probably much more difficult to get stimulus over the line than it was three weeks ago. If we have a look at the week to date, we've actually seen a gain for this week, and it's amazing, but it, we're in the sixth consecutive week of gains for the Australian share market. So that positivity, positivity continued, and we haven't seen a stretch of gains this large since the February to April period in 2010 where the Australian market amazingly saw 10 consecutive weeks of gains. So it does look like the market really focused on risk. We saw Fortescue up by 2.2% after its result. Newcrest up by 4.3%. We talk of more stimulus certainly helping its shares. And on the flip side, those defensives being sold off. So healthcare as well as the telecom and the utility sectors all finishing in the red. But altogether, a pretty resilient day for the Aussie market. Already prices, you look at BHP, yesterday in terms of Olympic Dam Woodside as well yesterday well, admittedly that was because they didn't have enough gas in terms of expansion of their their Pluto um, LNG project but this idea that we're seeing a lot of the companies in the resources space put the the checkbook away we've seen the reaction in Canberra suggestions the end of the mining boom or at least at the peak of the mining boom is beyond us I mean do you get a sense that we are moving into a, a slower sort of capex spend period there is a lot more conservatism out there, especially coming through from the miners. And we've seen that, whether it's through the dividend power payout ratio of BHP Billiton, which has come up to 35% in the second half, returning more of its profits to shareholders, or whether it's been through uh, the capital expenditure plans where we have seen a number of projects are being delayed. And that's understandable given that we are in an environment where we are seeing commodity prices falling and costs rising. In fact, if we have a look at iron ore prices overnight, we did see them falling to 104 US a ton. Now, that represents a 30% drop uh, from the 149 dollar peak that we saw for the year back in April. So we have seen some steep falls there. So I guess the question now for those iron ore miners is whether this is um this is near the bottom of that iron ore price or whether there's more pain to come. It is a, a time in terms of seasonality which is pretty slow in terms of demand. Uh, demand seems to peak halfway through the year and then it sort of bottoms out in the third quarter before bouncing back in the fourth quarter. But I think adding to uh, the price weakness that we've seen in iron ore has been, I guess, the confidence around trade, around China and the European situation. But all in all, even though we have seen iron ore prices falling down to uh, the lowest level that we have, uh, we have seen uh, for a long time now, uh, since uh, since December 2009 actually, we've seen the iron ore plays holding up very well. Fortescue having a great today day today on the back of its profit announcement and its plans and BHP and Rio Tinto holding up well in Australia as well. Let's talk about a company that maybe didn't have quite a good day. Indeed, we're talking about steep falls in the iron ore price. Steep fall in Fairfax share price today, um, Julia. Big headline miss, 2.7 uh, billion dollars. We were listening to Mr. Highwood, Fairfax Media um, CEO. He was suggesting, look, underlying strength is still there, sticking very much by the mastheads print. We're still committed. Look, what did you make of the result and what does it tell you about the outlook for the company? The underlying result came broadly uh, just ahead of market expectations at $205.4 million. The market was expecting just under $200 million there. But I think the key for this stock is there doesn't really seem to be a strong catalyst as to see a key turnaround in its business in the short term. And if anything, what we are likely to see is a couple of years of transition from the old media to the new media. We are seeing uh, huge write-downs coming through now. And I guess the market quite disappointed with the nature of those write-downs have a look at the mastheads which are essentially Sydney Morning Herald, The Age and the Australian Financial Review. The, the, the value of that being written down from $3.3 billion down to just $1.3 billion. In fact, net assets more than halving from $4.4 billion down to $2 billion. And I guess with this com company 
saying it's yet to be tested in term, uh, terms of its new strategy. So a time of transformation, but also a time of uncertainty. And unfortunately, the share price suffering today, and we saw some steep falls.